Hi, Lisa. Welcome to The Borrowed Book. Have you always wanted to be a writer? If not, what did you dream of being? I have wanted to be a writer for as long as I can remember, almost. My older brother was a really good writer, and I remember very well the day when he brought home a copy of his poem, The Bee Went Under the Sea, with a big blue ribbon, and I just remember listening to him read that and looking at that blue ribbon and thinking, I want to do that. And so I was always writing stories and always making little books and trying to sell them to my grandparents and things. And a very special first grade teacher spotted that interest in me when I was brand new in a school in Northboro, Massachusetts. And I still remember her coming to my desk and looking at this story I was writing during indoor recess and saying to me, you are a wonderful writer. And it's funny how you have those little defining moments in life because that was one of mine. From then on, I just had in mind that I was a writer and I could be a writer and I always believed it because my first grade teacher told me so. How long did you write before you sold your first book? I've been writing all my life, but uh, as a younger writer, I never really finished much of anything. And my first big mainstream sale was a novel called Tending Roses, which came out in 2001 and was sold in about 1999. I started that book some years before that, maybe two or three years before that, when my grandmother came to visit me when my first son was born. And some of the stories she told just inspired in me the idea to write those stories down and that those stories were significant in my life. And I didn't know what to do with them, and it was a few years later, between career and kids and whatnot, that I pulled that notebook out of a drawer and had the idea of combining her real-life memories with a fictional family who are like and unlike my own family. Uh, my family would like you to know that they are more neurotic than we really are. And that book took me about a year to write, took about uh, six months to get an agent for it, took about nine months for that agent to sell it. A lengthy process, but I'm sure it was well worth the effort. Now, tell us about your latest release. One reviewer called Dandelion Summer a combination of The Help, Driving Miss Daisy, and Water for Elephants, which is kind of a good description. It sounds like a strange combination, but uh, Dandelion Summer is really, really is a story about relationship. It's a story about a very unlikely friendship between an elderly man who really just feels like he doesn't have much left to live for anymore and a young girl who needs somebody to teach her how to live and uh, through circumstances because she's hired to cook for him in the afternoons they meet and they build this very unusual friendship and they end up on this wild search for his past and to, f to track down some memories that he starts to have of another house and another life and a housekeeper who saved him and all of this doesn't fit in with what he knows about himself. So in the process of, of tracking down this mystery, he and this teenage girl who needs a mentor really become close and sort of fill in the gaps in each other's lives and really give each other a new reason to live. Writers often include things in their novels that are very personal. Is there something in Dandelion Summer that's about you or someone you know? This isn't such a secret since Dandelion Summer came out, but one of the main characters, Norman, really was inspired by a combination of my dad, my grandfather, and a special reader friend of mine, Ed Stevens. I met Ed Stevens when he emailed me about the books and said he was enjoying reading my books and that if he could do anything to help me get word of the books out on the internet, he would love to do that. And so over the course of speeding up my internet service and building YouTube channels and things, we really got to know each other and I came to find out that Ed had a fascinating story. That he had been involved with NASA on the very first moon landings and he just had all this wonderful interesting history. And he also, in thinking back on this career that really was his Camelot era, the one thing he also thought about a lot was that he had one daughter and he had missed significant portions of her life as she was growing up. And so the character of Norman really became a combination of those things. And it made me think a lot of, about my own father, who 
was kind of like that. He was very involved in a busy career and was gone a lot and worked a lot. And we always knew that he loved us, but we also knew that, that he was gone to work a lot. And so there's a lot of those thoughts in there about fatherhood and what it means and balancing work and career. And when you look back on your life, what happens? And so many of those wonderful thoughts did come from my friend Ed. And so that's sort of a little secret behind the book.